Let's go over how to make a map in QGIS. It can be really easy to get QGIS installed, get the map open, or get the program open, but from here you might wonder what you should do to actually make a map. Before we can do any kind of map making, we need some data to map. And there's a couple ways to get data in QGIS. I'm going to show you a way that you can get data for free without any work. Um, and then I'm going to show you some data that I have that you can download if you're part of uh, Geospatial School and at least the basic membership there. But let's start. So if you open up the browser panel, and if you don't have the browser panel, go to View, uh, go to Panels, and click on Browser. And what you should see here is if you collapse everything, you should see XYZ tiles, and under XYZ tiles, you should have OpenStreetMap. And you can just drag this on, and there you go. Now when you zoom into an area, um, you will see information about that location. Uh, this is set up so that it shows in the native language. So if I zoom into the United States, you can see that I have uh, information there, and you can use this to make a very, very basic map. But that's not what we're gonna do. We wanna map our own data today. I want to go back to layers, I'm going to remove OpenStreetMap, and I'm going to show you how to add your own data. I'm going to go back to my browser, and on my C drive, in my temp folder, I have this example geo package. And this is the geo package you can install with the basic geospatial school membership. And I have some data in here. So I have a project, which I'm not going to open, we'll just work with the data. I have some imagery, and I have some shapefiles. First, let's go ahead and add in these shapefiles. I have a field boundary, I have some ponds, and I have some streams, okay? And that could be a map, and it looks nice, but what if I want some more context there? For that, I'm going to add some imagery. And so I have this imagery file here. I'm going to pull that in. Now, you notice this imagery looks kind of strange, so what I'm going to do is adjust the alpha value, transparency value. So if I go over on the layer styling panel, if you don't see the layer styling panel, go to um, View, Panels, and turn on Layer Styling. And if I go over on these, these panels on the left side to Transparency, and I select the Transparency Band as None, now you can see that imagery looks like it should. And I'm going to drag this down to the bottom, and there you can see that I have this nice area of interest. Now, the second part of our map, now that we have data, is symbology. How do we symbolize those data? And you can see here with the layer styling panel, I can adjust symbology. And I like the way the streams look. I like the way the ponds look. I want to adjust the field. And so I'm going to click on the field layer over the layers table of contents. I'm going to come back over. I'm going to click on the simple fill option. And I'm just going to change a few things. So notice the inside of the field is not filled in with any kind of fill. Um, I want to adjust that, so I'm going to change my brush style to solid. I'm going to change my fill color, and I actually want it to match the stroke color. So to do this, I can click here. I can click copy color, and I can come to my fill, fill color, and I can paste color. And there's the fill. But now that's a little too bright. Um, I don't want it to be all the way opaque. I want some transparency there. So I can click on my color here. I can come down to the opacity slider and I can drag that down to wherever to whatever range uh, works well for my application. So I'm going to go ahead and do it about like this. I think that'll work for me. I can go back. And so now you can see that I have this map showing this area that I'm interested in. Uh, but there's no context here. I don't have a title for what this map is about. I don't have a scale bar to give me context um, about the distance that is shown in this map or the area that is shown in this map. I don't have a legend to show me what these different features represent. Though it might be obvious, it might not be obvious to everyone. So we want to go ahead and we want to adjust that. And the way we can add those features is we can go to create a layout view. So let's go to project and new print layout. And I'm going to call this just layout one. And I'm going to say, okay, 
and this will open up a new window. You can see now I have this layout window, but there's nothing here. First, we're going to add our map in. And we can add a map over here on the left-hand side where we have this add map. And I'm going to click and drag the area where I want my map to appear. Something like that. And there, now the map that is shown in the QGIS interface, which I can just go back to it by clicking here, shows up inside of my layout view, which I can go back to um, in a separate window of QGIS. Great. So maybe I want this to cover the entire area of the page with just a little room, uh, a little margin around the edges. And we'll just adjust this till it's about right. We can come in and uh, we can adjust our settings for our layout options, um, which are over here. And we can get some guide, oh, sorry. The layout defaults popped up here in our options and layouts. Um, we can turn on a grid if we want to, grid spacing. We can set those things here. Um, and then we can turn on our view and we can go show grid or snap to grid. And if we do this, show our grid, you can now see some dots appearing on there. And if we go back to view and we turn on snap to grid, um, when I drag this, it'll snap to those grid points. So you can see that it's snapping right to the grid there. Uh, we can even make this full screen if we want to. So we'll make that a full screen. And I'm going to go back in and I'm going to turn off the grid and the snap to grid. Now we want to make a title. We want to add some text. And we can do that over here by adding a text box or a label. We can click on this. We can drag it across the top of the map. And here's where we can enter the properties. So we can enter the title here and we can say um, streams for water bodies, water bodies in my field. And that's what we want. Now we can come down and adjust the appearance of the font. We can change the size here to 20. Uh, maybe we want to go up to 32. And we can adjust the color if we want, but I'm going to leave it as black. Oops. Um, we can change the alignment, the position, and the size. I want to align this in the middle of my box. Um, we can give it a horizontal or vertical margin. Let's move it over just a little bit. So I want to move this over about 15 millimeters. Uh, I'm going to adjust this just a little bit so it's a little smaller. And then we can come down and we can give it a frame, so an outline. And we can give it a background, which in this case is white. And I want to make this a little bit transparent, so I'm going to click there. We can move this up. And then we'll adjust the opacity to something like this. And now we have a nice title header across our page. Now, we want to adjust where the data in this map appears a little bit. And we can do that by clicking on this Move Item Content button. So now if I click and drag, it will move this map. If I scroll the mouse wheel, I'll zoom in or out should zoom in or out. Oh, it's because I have the wrong thing selected. So if I now if I do this, it'll zoom in or out. So there we go, we zoomed in. Now we're going to zoom out. And I can use control to zoom in at smaller increments. If I hold control while I use the mouse wheel. So I want to just center this up so the data is the focal point. And there we go. And now I want to add a legend to show uh, what each of these different symbols represents. And I do that over here on the side panel by clicking Add Legend. And we'll just drag over here. And now I want to edit this legend. I want to make sure the grammar is correct. Uh, and I want to exclude the imagery because it's not very useful to have that in the legend. So we'll come down, we'll click on the legend here, go to Item Properties, 
come down, turn off auto update, click on NAPE imagery, remove it. Now I can click on field and I can relabel this um, field boundary. And I can go back to my item properties. I can click on pawns. I can just make that a capital P. I can go back and I can come and edit streams and just make this a capital S. And I can adjust the frame and the background just like I did with the um, title so that these can match in opacity. And now I want to add a scale bar so that we know about what the relative distances are here. And I do that over on this panel by clicking on scale bar. Now I just realized if you don't have this panel open, there's toolbox here. We can go to view and toolbars and click on toolbox. There are also panels available to add if you want to add those. But let's click on uh, the add scale bar. Let's draw it here. And it's very hard to see. You can see that it's showing this uh, in meters. But what we can do, let's put this back over in this corner. And now let's adjust this scale bar. So we have our scale bar item properties. And now we have fixed width. Uh, we can make this 50 and we can change this to three or four segments. Um, we can add a background that makes it easier for us to see uh, what those uh, values are. And we can even come change the style here. We have our style single box. We could do double box, which looks like this. Um, we have tick lines in the middle, down, tick lines up, stepped line. Uh, there's a lot of different, there's those different styles that you can do for your scale bar. All right, so there we have our scale bar. Maybe after this we want to add another little note um, over here that says... Um, Imagery available from Nate. And we want to just adjust this so that we give proper credit to our data. And we can come down and turn the background on so it's easily seen. And drag this down into a corner here. And then we want to add a north arrow. And we could do that with this north arrow button right here. So we can click add a north arrow. And we'll just draw where we want to place that under the legend, perhaps. And that adds uh, a north arrow there. And from here, we can um, add in a custom image or find new images. So we have arrows here. And let's just slide this open. We could select a different style of arrow if we wish to, uh, like this here or like that, or like that, we'll keep it here. Um, and there we have our map. Now you can play around with this and adjust these, these settings and features to whatever looks appropriate to you. And once you have this done, uh, we can save this. So if we control S, we can save this. Uh, we'll save the the whole QGIS project. I'm going to cancel. I'm not going to save this here. And we want to export this. We have many export options. We can export it here as an image, as an SVG, or as a PDF. So if I export this as an image and I just call it layout one and I save it and I click save, um, I'll get a notification that this has been exported and I can now open this map as an image. And there you can see the map that you made that you can now share with your colleagues or whoever you want to share it with. So that is how you can make a map in QGIS. 
I hope you found this useful. Once again, if you want to use this data, go over to Geospatial School and sign up for the basic membership. Thanks so much for watching.